Hello, and thank you for your time today. We are going to be covering some information about Biosonics automated monitoring systems utilizing split beam hydroacoustic technology. And we'll be looking at some highly specialized auto processing software that virtually eliminates the need for data processing. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. The applications for this technology include cooling water intakes, hydropower dams, uh, potential ocean energy projects, anywhere where we're interested to detect uh, targets of interest and assess their behavior, the size of the targets, uh, direction of travel, the speed of travel. Um, these systems are fully automated and have detection capabilities well in excess of 500 meters. A little bit of background on the use of split beam hydroacoustics. Biosonics has been a manufacturer of these instruments since the late 70s. Again, everything we're talking about today involves the use of split beam hydroacoustics. These instruments are widely accepted by the scientific community. These echo sounders are multi-channel, capable of operating several transducers from a single echo sounder surface unit. The mobile systems are quite rugged, portable, and easy to install and operate. Biosonics transducers are digital in that the signal within the transducer is digitized, providing for a slightly cleaner signal in the return uh, information coming from the transducer cable. Split beam hydroacoustics is the core method for fishery stock assessment worldwide. Why is this? Well, split beam, again, provides very long-range detection capabilities. The methods are reliable, proven, and scientifically defensible. There are decades of case studies in support of the use of split beam acoustics. But most substantially is the fact that split beam hydroacoustics allows us to measure the true target strength of individual targets that are detected by the beam. Let's talk a little bit about split beam and the split beam method. Target strength, as it is, or TS, is, the, is a measure of the acoustic reflectivity of a target. Okay, the amount of, of energy that is reflected by a target in the water column. It is a function of the cross-sectional area of that target. It's also a function of the density difference between the water and that target. But most importantly, target strength is directly related to the size of a target. So by measuring the target strength, we're effectively measuring the size of an object or a target in the water column. The split beam method for determining target strength centers around the use of a transducer that is equipped with multiple receiving elements within the face of the transducer. So the, if you imagine the transducer, uh, the beam that's emitted from the transducer, imagine that divided into four quadrants. We have one sending element that is going to emit the, the pulse of sound energy or the ping going to encounter an object in the water column and be reflected back where it will be received by multiple elements within the face of the transducer. So what a split beam echo sounder does is effectively computes the arrival angle and looks at the phase differential of, at the different points in space on the face of the transducer and then is thereby able to position the target relative to the x and y axis. By determining the position of the target relative to the x and y axis, we can then compensate for off-axis off -axis signal loss and, and then generate a measure of the true target strength of each target detected within the beam. So we determine its position in space, the range of the target, and its position relative to the x and y axis. And then we're also 
obtaining a measurement of the true reflectivity or size of the target. So if we consider the mobile echo sounder previously shown, the DTX system, and then take that same technology and deploy it in a different form factor. We have the same transducer here shown mounted on a mechanical dual axis rotator. Uh, perhaps on a tripod mount or another uh, or other rigid mount for the transducer. We take the echo sounder and deploy it in a rack configuration. Instead of a laptop computer, we're using a heavy-duty purpose-built PC that's running some, some modified data acquisition software with expanded capabilities. And so we're using the same split beam technology we use for mobile surveys in a fixed position, and now we're calling it an automated monitoring system. Okay, these systems are designed for 24 hour a day, seven day a week, continuous operation. Every target detected within the beam, for every target detected within the beam, we are able to obtain a measure of the size of the target, the speed, it's, of course its location, and the direction of travel. The software that we're going to show you in a few moments is capable of real-time processing of data. All of our electronics are rack-mounted and heavy-duty, again, built for continuous operation. And we have specialized software, not only for data processing, but also for watchdog capabilities to monitor system operational parameters, such as data storage capacity, availability of power, transducer aim. The net effect of these, this, this heavy-duty hardware and specialized software is that we, we can provide a very stable and reliable data collection system. And we can set the system up, install it, and walk away for days, weeks, or even months at a time and be confident that when, when we return, we will have data and we will avoid any catastrophic data loss. Here we're looking at a scale representation of the beam as it may uh, be in a, in a sample installation. You can see that we can either use multiple transducers for continuous full water column monitoring, or we might deploy a single transducer on a rotator that is programmed to scan or tilt, thereby sampling the entire water column with a single transducer. Again, the capabilities or the applications uh, for these systems include cooling water intakes, hydropower dams, anywhere where we're interested to measure the impacts uh, of uh, perhaps a man-made device or structure on objects within the water column. Now we're going to get into some case studies. We'll look at two real-world uh, projects. First of all, an automated salmon counting system deployed in the Quinault River here in the Pacific Northwest. Very remote, rugged location, completely unmanned. The objective here was to count the returning adult sockeye salmon as they traveled up the river on their way to Lake Quinault. It's a scale representation of the system that was deployed. A specialized track and trolley system was designed and installed to, to compensate for the fluctuation in water levels and still maintain an optimal sampling area within the river. Here are some photographs of the system during installation. You can see the aluminum track running it out into the river. This is a gravity mounted system. No pilings or piers were, were driven into the riverbed, minimizing the disturbance. And here we see the transducer, the split beam transducer mounted on a dual axis rotator on the car that is able to travel up and down the track. Here we're looking at the remote power model.
modules that were built. These were simply uh, an array of deep cycle batteries mounted in a special trailer with an alternator charger system. There were two of these that were rotated for continuous power supply in this remote unmanned location. The electronics were housed within an equipment trailer. And this system, using the specialized auto processing software, is able to generate uh, this type of information for the project managers. Here we're looking at fish count reports. We're seeing the total fish counts. We're seeing fish counts by day. We're looking at another graph showing direction of travel for each fish within the, the river. And this report is emailed to the, man to the project manager each day. And the important thing to, to consider here is that there is zero data processing effort associated with this reporting. This is done completely automatically. Another potential application for this technology is early warning systems. In this case, the concern was debris at a nuclear power plant, debris entering the cooling water intake channel. You're looking at a, a uh, diagram that's illustrating the issue where we have mats of vegetation that could be st uh, pulled loose from the, the uh, river bottom during storm events and swept into the cooling water intake channel. And so this system is capable of detecting these large amounts of vegetated material uh, before they enter the cooling water intake channel, thereby providing for an early warning system and minimizing the risk of a potential intake clog, of the uh, clogging of the intake screen. Here we're looking at photographs of the system tuning stage where we're, where actual uh, mats of vegetation were deployed from a boat moored in the river channel. Here you can see the system being installed on the cement wall uh, there in the riverbank. And again, scientists working to deploy the targets of, in, uh, of these very specific size. And here we are in the equipment trailer training the plant personnel on operation of the system. And in the echogram, you're, you can actually see faintly the targets there being detected quite effectively. Some screenshots of the auto tracker software, as we call it. Again, the, the uh, targets of interest here are highlighted in red. You can see them on the echogram here. And effectively, what we provided is a red light, green light system. So as targets of interest are detected, they are recorded as tracks. And we are able to keep a cumulative total of the number of targets, the size of each target, as it's detected in real time, and actuate an alarm when the threshold has been exceeded. So now let's have a look at the actual software. This is Biosonic's visual acquisition data collection and configuration software for the DTX Echo Sounder system. And we are, going, we are running in the background an actual data file from the Quinault River salmon counting project. I'm going to restart this file in playback mode to illustrate the auto-processing capabilities of this module of visual acquisition software. This specialized module of visual acquisition is only available with the automated monitoring system split beam uh, technology, the, the hardware system, as previously shown. <coughs> What we're looking at here is an echogram from the Quinault River. This is a transducer installed in a horizontal side-looking aspect. 
We're looking across the river to a range of approximately 33 meters. And it's at about 33 meters where we're, the beam is encountering the substrate on the bottom of the river, as shown by the bright yellow return. Now, if we turn on the track display, what we're seeing now are the adult salmon being detected and recorded as tracks. Now, in configuration, I will show you how we are able to set the different parameters that define each target. So we're able to set the threshold, the target strength threshold, as well as the echo length, and some other parameters to, to create very specialized detection capabilities that are specific to our targets of interest. Similarly, we're able to enable track detection and then set the parameters to define what constitutes a track. We're entering range bins and tracking window information that will limit our track detection to, again, our specialized targets of interest and the parameters that meet our criteria. So this allows us to minimize false alarms while maximizing detection capability. So once we've configured, we run the system. And again, here we are looking at our list of tracks that's been, that's been recorded for us. If we pause the system now and, and view our track display, we can see the information that's recorded. And we can see that information for each track includes the first and last ping, the mean echo level, directly related to the size of the target, the mean range of the target, the speed of the target, and the direction of travel. And so here we can see that For example, if we double click on this track number six, we'll see that the mean range was 30 meters. So we're able to find this track and correlate it in the echogram visually. If we go out to 30 meters, here we see the red arrow. And at 30 meters, we have our target. And this bright colored return on the echogram is an adult salmon swimming upriver and recorded automatically as a track. Okay. We have the time of each track, again the first and last ping, the echo level or size the range, so we have location information, we have speed and direction of travel, all being recorded automatically. So then if we look at that information in a typical summary fashion, what we might expect, this is the type of information that project managers can benefit from. Okay, We have our counts, both cumulative and daily, we have direction of travel. We have range from transducer distribution. So we can look at where the targets are occurring within the river. If we look at the distance from the transducer, we can see that the majority are being found both in areas approximately between 5 and 10 meters from the transducer, and then another pulse here at about 20 meters from the transducer. So extremely uh, valuable information generated in real time with no data processing required. So we eliminate the costly and labor-intensive data processing efforts
typically associated with split beam hydroacoustic projects and provide this information to project managers in a convenient format via email or a web-based dashboard system. So I would like to thank you for your time. If you would like more information about Biosonics and our automated split beam hydroacoustic monitoring system and our auto processing software, please contact me anytime at the number shown on the screen, 206-782-2211.